Jason. So, what's what's the the biggest challenge you faced so far leading up to this fight? Well, I guess there's a bit of pressure on me because um, it's every fighter's dream to become world champion, and uh, I've had two opportunities in the past and unfortunately fallen short on those occasions. Um, and there's not too many fighters in the history that have been given four opportunities to achieve their dreams. So this is a must must win fight for me, and I know that. Um, so there is pressure on me to perform and, and to achieve my dream that I've worked nearly 20 years I've been boxing all for this moment and um, I know that I can't let it slip but that's why I prepare the way I do I dedicate my whole life to this sport and I give this everything I make every sacrifice uh, you know I work hard every single day for this moment and to have that world title wrapped around my waist and um, on May 13 I don't think anyone can stop me uh, I believe I'm the best band away in the world right now and I've got to go out there and prove that you look in great physical condition. Uh, I see you seem like more lean, cut, but you also have some mass. Um, tell me about your diet and, and what you've been working on yeah, eating lately. Uh, I'm a true professional. I, I don't just get into camp for eight weeks or 10 weeks before a fight. I train year round, every day. I love the sport. I'm a real student of the game and consistently just striving to get better and get better and get better and achieve the absolute most I can out of this sport. And um, my diet is always immaculate. I take no shortcuts. My training is second to none. I work hard every single day. I do a lot of recovery and make sure that every single day that I finish and I feel happy with what I've achieved in that day, I know that I've improved as a fighter. And I think that's my best asset is that I'm a real professional. And um, I never become complacent. Even after a win, I sit down and watch that tape and see what I can do better. And I feel like right now I'm a complete fighter, a much more complete fighter than I was in my first opportunities to become world champion. And I think that's gonna show on May 13. You're gonna see the experience, you're gonna see my improvements, and you're gonna see a hungry fighter going out there, doing whatever it takes to become world champion. What do you feel like you improved on um, recently that there was, might've been a weakness in your game that you feel like is it's an improvement now, yeah, whether it's look, from it's, speed, power, or yeah, anything it's hard to pinpoint one. You know, I think I've definitely improved on my speed and my power, but mainly my control, my my the way I control the distance, the way that I can control and dictate the fight, make sure the fight's happening on my terms. I think in the past I've sort of done a lot of study of my opponents and put together a game plan and really tried to, I guess, negate what they're good at. Mm instead of just doing what I'm good at and fighting to my strengths. And I think that's what it's, what I've learned and what I've become better at is it just doing what I'm good at, worrying about me. And I know that me at my best is good enough to beat anyone else in the division. And I don't need to, I still study my opponents, but I don't need to worry about what they're doing. I need to worry about me performing at my best. And I know my best is good enough. And uh, to, to move a little bit outside of the US, let's talk about your home country, yeah. Australia. Can we talk about, can you talk to about the support between Sugar Neeks and Ebony Bridges and everyone in Australia that supported you um, and vice versa? Yep. Like, can you, can you yeah, elaborate on it's, uh, it's really exciting. Um, you know, boxing's not a huge sport in Australia. It doesn't get the media attention. It doesn't get the endorsements. It doesn't get, you know, everyone watching and talking about it um, like it should. And so for me and my brother, we've always wanted to grow the sport. We love boxing and we want to see it the fighters get the respect and the recognition they deserve and it's exciting you know you got yeah like Ebony Bridges and, and Shanika Johnson you got uh, Jai Patea you got Tim Zhu you got George Cambosis you got all these fighters coming through and winning titles and showing everyone in Australia hey we can go on the big stage perform and beat these people and become champion of the world and now me are going to become world champion my brother's going to become world champion the week after We're going to bring another two world titles back to Australia and it's just going to help grow the sport and get everyone saying well Australia and box you know we can fight and the whole country is going to get behind us and it's just going to help grow the sport and give us the respect and the recognition we deserve and it's, it's exciting really exciting would it be a dream come true for a uh, uh, many Australian boxers, male and female, to be on the same card in Las Vegas. Because uh, Ebony Bridges told me that once, that she would love to fight in uh, Las Vegas. It could be at MGM Grand, um, you name it. But how significant would that be for uh, Australia? And to talk to Bob Arum and say, hey, come on, let's 
put the deal together. Yeah, oh, mate, it's incredible, right? You know, we, me and my brother feel so grateful to be signed to Top Rank and to be over here and, and fighting on the biggest stage. You know, my brother's fighting on the Haney Lomachenko show. It doesn't, it doesn't get any bigger than that. And it's exciting for us. And we know how, how uh, I guess, how important it is that we 